Now we're going to get into the real power of Tana. There are lots of applications that are outliners, but none that really take it to the next level. And this is why I'm going to be talking about this object-based approach. If you're a programmer or someone from a technical background, you might be familiar with object-oriented programming, and this will seem quite familiar for you. If you're not, don't worry about the definitions. I'm going to explain everything and how it relates to Tana. But the point of departure is nodes in an outline. Then we define objects or entities. Then we add any additional context or information. And then we're also able to search for related information. And I'm going to go to a diagram to illustrate this. Before we do that though, let's first go back to our demo workspace and look at this tree of nodes. Now, this was my logistics optimization project. You'll recall that I added the super tag project, but I've just taken that out so that we can build it up from the ground. So if I go into this node here, and let me just say control shift page down and open up all these child nodes here. So I have overview, points of departure, and important questions. Okay, so I could collapse these and it just gives me the structure that I can return back to easily. So now we can get into the diagram version of this. So as I say, the point of departure here is an ordinary node in an outline. So that's a logistics optimization project. And these are the child nodes over here. I haven't added all of them because I don't think it's necessary just for this example. Okay, so this is my high level node and this is the one that I want to convert into an object. And the way that I do that is with a super tag. So the super tag promotes the node to an object, which basically makes it an instance in my database or in a database. So this logistics optimization project now becomes a project. Okay, let me go back to Tana and say, cool, add the project super tag here. Okay, now you can see that I get these fields. So if I go back to the diagram and I look at these fields, fields allow me to add context to any object and also to define relationships. Now in this specific example, I'm not really adding the relationships or adding too much context necessarily. Just adding a status field, a priority, and a due date. This is really the bare minimum, and this is what comes with the default Tana setup. You're going to have a look at that just now. Okay, so the third thing that you'll see here is this project tasks, and that's the final element which, which I want to look at, which is searches and, well, including related content and references, which allow me to retrieve relevant content or contextual content. So this is the first part over here. That's the search, and then one reference over here. And I've added that specifically in today's node. Let me go to today's node, where I said, talking about the at logistics optimization project. So now if I go there, I can see that reference at the bottom over there. So those are the three components, and I'm gonna look at each of them in a little bit more detail now. And the first and perhaps most important part in this whole object-based approach, as you've probably guessed, is the objects themselves and that is defined by super tags. Super tags basically define what the node is. So it says, this is this type of entity. And they are the starting point for classifying information, which then enables you to add the additional context and bring up the fields, etc. Now, if I tag something with a super tag, it's the equivalent of me saying, this belongs in this database. So historically, you might have thought of tags as a concept. So you know, relationships or whatever. It's like a sort of loose association tag. This is different. It's saying this is this thing very specifically. And I wanted to add this point from the Tana documentation because I think it's very valuable, which is a good way to check if a super tag is right is thinking this is a when adding something to a tag. So I could say this is a meeting. This is a task. I wouldn't say this is a astrophysics. That doesn't work. That's that loose association type of tag. And that's dealt with separately in Tana. So it really is important to think about this as a structured entry into a database. So for example, if I have a meeting that I want to take notes on, I simply add hashtag meeting to my node and my user defined fields automatically pop up, allowing me to add the information. So if I go to my demo workspace, let's say this is a kickoff meeting over here. And I say hashtag meeting and there my fields come up. These are the default Tana fields. Now, a technical side note over here, the more accurate way to think of super tags from a software paradigm is as classes. A class is a blueprint for creating different objects. So my meeting super tag defines a class, and then I create an instance of that class, which is the object. So all of my meetings are objects in my meeting class. 
Okay. I, as I said, yeah, I prefer the database analogy. It just feels more intuitive to me. So I've already jumped to how to add super tags to a note, but I wanted to just show here, this would be an example super tag, example super tag. And I just said hashtag, started typing, and I can just say control enter to create that super tag. Now, the other way of adding a super tag is to say another example super tag over here and using the command tool. So that would just say control K and I just say convert to super tag. There we go. So that's another nice way. You don't have to always do it on an existing node. And the utility of super tags, I just quickly want to bring it to light again, is this facilitating of consistent structuring of information. They can really be thought of as templates and they prompt you to add additional context and data to your nodes and ensure that your data inputs are consistent. The other cool thing is that when you change the super tag, it updates everything throughout your workspace. And this is really good for like long-term consistency. It's also easy input of information on the go. This is really not to be understated. I don't have to navigate away to the database to enter the information. So I don't have to go to my tasks database to go and enter a task. I can just enter the information wherever I am, hashtag task adds it to that work, to that database. And then this last point here is that this combination of fields and super tags allows you to build appropriate schemas as simple or as complex as you needed. And we're gonna get into that a little bit now, but really you can define very well-structured systems and relate information to another in a way that works for you. Just to add something at the end of this video, I've said there that super tags can be thought of as templates. But that's really an oversimplification. It's the simplest way of thinking about how to add information in Tana. But I really want to go back to that software analogy of object-oriented programming. Because when you have objects in your workspace, you can build software around it in your Tana workspace. And this is what makes Tana a platform tool. If you allow your imagination to run, you can build your own custom applications in Tana. And this is really the foundation as these super tags. So it's not just a template, don't be limited by that thinking. But anyways, back to the original course.